Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Ostroff from Legalese Marketing and this is Exhibit A Attorneys where we talk to attorneys and other experts across the country to share what it truly takes to be the Exhibit A of a successful attorney. Joining me today, you've probably seen him on your uh, Facebook ads, Sam Alayi of Legal Funnels. Sam uh, has created multiple six and seven figure virtual law firms while generating more than 7,000 clients online becoming the first lawyer with over 2,000 five-star Google reviews. He now teaches other lawyers to grow and automate their own dream virtual law firm so they can work on their own flexible schedule from home. Started his company in 2013, right out of law school, to help entrepreneurs start their business so that they could work online from anywhere in the world. Breezy, you're a mic still on. Never mind, I got you muted. Um, only lawyer in the world with more than 2,000 Google reviews, is that right? No, actually just recently just found out there's a couple other attorneys um, who actually uh, have a lot of reviews as well. So no more of the most, <laughs> but right, of one course. of the fastest. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also the only lawyer recipient of the ClickFunnels 2 comma club, meaning he generated over a million dollars with funnels as a lawyer, now building virtual law firms with legal funnels. So thank you so much for being here, Sam. Thank you so much, Jordan, I'm excited. For everybody who's been enjoying the show, our last episode was on Thursday, where Ryan Locke talked to us about long form content and, and hiring people digitally. Today with Sam, we are talking about how to use a sales funnel and Facebook ads to get clients online. So my first question is, what is a sales funnel? All it is, is just a multi-step process that turns pros your prospects into your clients. So it's, a, it's basically a series of pages, videos, and emails that you create, that you drive your prospects to go down a very particular path to get them to take action, which for, for most lawyers, which is one of two things, either scheduled bookings or give me a direct call. So it's just directing them to do those two desired actions. So when it comes to a funnel, what like what is a funnel not like what are lawyers thinking that they're doing right here that they're not doing correctly it's it, the opposite of a funnel is pretty much a website a website is a place for you to kind of go explore look around check out you know the the lawyers you know the, their accomplishments and what they do and how they can help a funnel is much 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 simpler straight uh, basically less is more and it's very crystal clear um, the path that you want your clients to take. And you're kind of forcing them to go down this particular path in a very systematic way. Um, the first part of this funnel is actually is to collect your, your prospects uh, contact information. So usually just their email address, sometimes their name, email, and their phone number. That, that's the very first thing you want to do. Um, after that, your next kind of thought should be, I need to nurture, build a relationship with this prospect who just showed and raised their hand that says, yes, I am interested in that thing. And that's one of that's, that nurturing is done over one or two ways. It's pretty much done either through video, where right away after, after they raise their hand and says, yes, I'm interested in this thing, you show my video, a mini video. I, I usually don't uh, push for people making webinars. I call it a, mi a mini video. Uh, right then, they just say you have your, your ideal dream client that walks into your office. Exactly what would you tell them? And that's been, that's basically what the video is about, you know, very kind of very personal kind of conversation, just like this, like face to face where you talk to your clients. Hey, I know you have this problem and look at all these people that I've helped in the past. If you would like me to help you just like them, then go ahead and do this. That's the second part, the nurturing. And there's also you have your emails, automated emails that kind of helps with our nurturing to get them to first watch that video. And then that video pushes them to do one of two things against scheduled bookings or give you a call. For most lawyers, um, it's usually scheduled bookings. I would say 80% of, of us need to push them to do a scheduled booking. You don't want them to call you right away because if they're if, if you just leave out your phone number on your website and you have your prospects calling you, then it becomes a kind of like a window shopping syndrome where people are just calling you, asking you for how much is your price, and you don't want to fall into that trap. When you have a scheduled bookings, people are a little bit more serious. They show up to the meeting kind of with action in mind, and they're a little bit more ready to take action and actually want to hire you. So I always try to tell most of my uh, uh, most of our lawyers push them to a scheduled booking, and then the the booking the, that conversation becomes actually where you do the sales. So most of the funnel is just to get people to the, to that phone conversation, but then you let the 
the phone conversation actually do the selling. So are you saying that lawyers shouldn't have a website or are you saying you just shouldn't focus on your website being what drives clients to you? Lawyers should have webs should have a website, but it, it should not be the way where you get clients. You, you know, a, a website is just a way for people to look you up to make sure that you're legit, that you're real. You should still have that. However, you should not use your website to get clients. So basically, basically if you do do paid ads, if you do do Facebook ads, or Google ads, you should not send people to your homepage because people will get lost and people won't take action. Instead, you should always have a rule of thumb. If you ever create content or if you do ads, always send people to your funnel. Always, 100%, not 99%, 100 percent of the time. So in essence, your website is almost like a glorified resume. Exactly. Glorified resume, brochure, somewhere to kind of, for people to kind of explore you. Okay. So when you talk about, you know, you've got people coming to this initial page, you, you're hitting them with this mini video, not a webinar. Is there an ideal length or does it matter based upon what you're doing? It's the ideal length should be the, the amount of time that it takes for you to properly come in and get that to your clients. These days, most people don't have time. So I can tell you for sure, it should not be a 45 minute or an hour video, it's just way too long. Maybe it was the case in 2018, <laughs> latest by then. But now these days, people don't have time. They want to get straight to the point. So that should be communicated within five to 10 minutes, actually. So I would say that's a desired time, five to 10 minutes. And you were talking about that five to 10 minute video. That's basically like if, if they were sitting in your office, what's the first piece of information or the first things you want to tell them? Yeah, that, exactly. Exactly. When you just got to imagine you're, you haven't talked to this, your prospect, they just they walk into your office. What would you tell them? And it's usually... But this is actually another part where people, um, where lawyers kind of mess up on. They start sitting there making this video about all, all the things that they've done, <laughs> all the things that they do and their accomplishments as a huge mistake. And that's why most people don't take action. Instead, everybody who comes to your, to your law firm is always thinking about them. How, how does it help me? So that means you've got to switch the entire conversation and make it all about them. Basically, the best way to kind of explain it is be a good date. Ask, you know, <laughs> ask about your date. How was their day? So make it about them. Another way to kind of uh, think about that is always talk in the problem solution kind of language. I know this is the problem that you have. This is the solution I have. I know this is the problem you have. This is the solution I have. Don't talk about anything outside of that. And so well, let's give a couple examples here. So you're a criminal defense attorney. You've got clients coming to you. So problem would be, I just got arrested. Exactly. Yes. You start off with the problem. You actually, you instigate the problem. You don't just state it. So, you know, I know you just got arrested. That must feel, you know, you must feel very anxious and feel stressed out. You probably don't know what to do. You're probably frantically trying to call up people to see what you should do. So you should, yeah, in the first couple of minutes, you should kind of um, resonate and kind of instigate that problem. And then solution becomes, we keep you out of jail. We get the case dismissed. We get you back on track for life. Uh, before the resolution, I, I usually like providing proof. So instead of making a promise, that this is how it can help you. The even way better and way stronger is to provide proof of, of people that you helped in the past. So that's when your, your past client testimonials are going to be really your best way to get people to do whatever you want them to do. So problem, proof, then, as you said, your basically benefit-driven um, how you can help them. Again, it's not, and that's also another <laughs> tricky part for most lawyers is lawyers fall into the legalese trap. They say, hey, I can offer you chapter seven and chapter 13 and then talk about all this stuff. You should avoid legalese. If you're estate planning lawyers, don't say you're a estate planning lawyer. Just talk about the whole benefit of how you can protect them and save them a lot of money and headache down the line. That's the kind of language you should use. Don't, you know, so basically avoid any legalese and avoid any, any words, any buzzwords that only lawyers know. I mean, that's why, that's solely why we called the company legalese, just E-A-S-E. For exactly. exactly that Great. reason that there's too much legalese ESE. I love it. That's actually very smart. Thank you. So there are going to be clients that want to make sure they are hiring the best go-to lawyer. So without you making it about yourself, how do you share that information? I mean, is that something you're sending in an automated email? Is that something they should just find on your website? Like how do you control that part of it? So the first part of the funnel is you got to bring people to your funnel and that's done in one of two ways, either through creating content, creating value in the marketplace through videos just like this, writing blog articles, posting on Quora, or you go pay, uh, you pay for that traffic to come to you, which is one of two ways I would say either Google ads 
or Facebook ads. That's it. Those are the only way, two ways you could bring people to your funnel. After that, when, when somebody goes to your first page of your funnel, which is usually the, your landing page, you capture their contact information. Now you have their email address. Now you better use that email address to automatically follow up with them at least I was just sent seven to 30 times to get them and to watch that video and then to do the booking. And is there, you know, that seven to 30 follow-ups, is there a specific or best practice time frame, or is that, you know, think about their problem and figure out the right timeline that fits the problem? Yeah. Uh, you want to be more aggressive than not. So, um, you know, it's, there's a whole scale of, uh, of, you know, how, how often should you, should you email and more for kind of emailing more, as long as your emails are not too obnoxious, you're not talking about yourself too much and you make it all all about your clients, then yes, you can actually send at least for the first week one email a day. Then maybe the second week you can move to like one once every other day, and then after that it'll be once every three days or so. But yeah, usually I would say the the play is to be more aggressive, send more emails than not. Yeah, and I always find it funny when you know, like we'll get those clients who will call my law firm and be like, "Hey, you guys are trying to get in touch with me like too frequently," and I'm always like, "All right, cool. Then hire a lawyer that's not going to care about you that much. Like, go for it. Have fun." Yeah, and you got to realize out of 100 people, you're going to get an assortment types of people. So you, you're going to get people who are going to get annoyed. You're going to get people who are like, why don't you, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever. So you should not change your overall strategy based on what people tell you. Because if you do that, you're just going to be making constant changes. You got to just pick the strategy that makes the most sense for the 100 people overall generally, which is, again, being more aggressive. So, yeah, are you going to get people who get annoyed and who are going to mark you as spam? So be it. So just, you know, that's just part of the game. Just uh, try to be more aggressive. Makes perfect sense. So during this process, I mean, you've got the video, you're sending emails, you know, what are you telling them about? I mean, is that really a trying to get in their mind as best as you can, or are there some best practices there? And it goes back to that problem kind of solution and proof uh, kind of language. And what I teach inside of our program is that it's called a one-liner, which is a one line where you clearly explain to your prospects exactly the problem that your that your pro dream clients have, uh, what's your solution to that problem, and then what's the result as a result of them receiving your service. So you know, once you create that one-liner, that becomes kind of like your uh, kind of your foundation for you to create the rest of your emails and write the copy inside your funnel. Uh, more or less, you're going to be repeating. So you know, if you if you come up with your three benefits, your three core benefits, you come up with your three core problems and you know three core results, more or less, you, you're going to be using that language. And it's okay to repeat yourself and say in different ways. Um, you want to kind of kind of stay within that realm and not really go anything outside of that. No, don't talk about yourself. Again, avoid legalese. You could tell some stories, provide proof. You know, all that is play ball pretty much. How do you help lawyers navigate sort of that telling a story without violating client confidentiality? I mean, is that just to leave the names out and make things a little vague? Like, how do we yeah. how do we thread that needle? You could just use the first name, uh, first name, and also if 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 a review gets posted online, it's public, so you can just use that. You can take screenshots of it. Um, you know what? You want to show authenticity to reviews. So usually, screenshots works better than you know just than just having the text of a review. So if you can provide just some screenshots, go to your Google, pull out some screenshots. The, those kinds of proof uh, things works. And also, uh, don't forget about video reviews. Video reviews are also very, very, very powerful. Uh, we could talk. We could talk all about uh, reviews all day long, but um, but video reviews also. If you have at least three, that be, those three videos could become the golden nugget of like basically you getting clients for the next couple of years. So have a goal to have, get at least three video reviews. Put it on your side, your funnel. Put it in your emails, and just use that as much as you can. So that's three clients sharing the experience they had when working with a law firm on yes. video. Yep. And any, any, and any lawyer can get those three reviews, video reviews. And the reason why most people don't, why most lawyers don't have those three reviews uh, yet, which is I'm sure, you know, most of us, is because you haven't asked yet. So as long as, you know, you offered a great service, you take care of your clients right then and then, hey, do you mind if you record your video review um, and get that and it will definitely pay off. Do you, I mean, it almost sounds to me like you don't want a lot of production value in this, like them just recording themselves on a webcam is great. Or do you want something a little bit nicer? Yes. I'm all about that personal touch, um, recording that very 
personal feeling video, which is videos that you record on your phone. Um, you know, the professional kind of a video experience is looks cool and all, but once you get into marketing and once you kind of test different things out, you realize that more professional and more formal that never converts as well as as informal personal. So all my videos, everything that I do, it's always coming from either behind my computer, uh, on my phone, you know, uh, you know, simple editing, simple words on the screen, keeping it very simple. And the one, one thing that kind of uh, inspired this was the infamous Ty Lopez. Ty, remember the Ty Lopez, those uh, infamous YouTube ad videos? Um, there was this famous for a marketer, Ty Lopez, you know, a couple of years ago, he, he was one of the first people who started um, putting out YouTube ads and they were converting really well. And what was so powerful about those videos is that they were just um, hold, they were just like video headshot, uh, basically videos. And those videos got millions and millions and millions of views uh, using YouTube ads. So you, you, you just imagine how much money he made off those videos. And that was like a, you know, basically a turning point for me. I'm like, this is it, you know, don't avoid all these professional videos. Just keep it very simple and just, you know, use your phone to record those videos. Which makes total sense. Cause I mean, at this point, I think like I was reading something that the camera in the iPhone now was like a $40,000 camera, like eight years ago. And it's just it crazy is. to see the technology that they've put in now to make it, you know, on, at your fingertips. Yeah, it's good enough. Your, all of our iPhones are worth better than any other camera that's out there. Actually, actually just yesterday I was working all day on creating YouTube ads. And recorded it entirely on my iPhone and it came out so good. I was like so surprised. Like the technology these days is it's improved dramatically in the last couple of years. Yeah. So I want to transition a little bit to the advertising of your funnel. But before that, what else do we need to cover when it comes to best practices, biggest issues you see people seeing or stuff we just didn't cover about creating that funnel? It's um, a lot of lawyers have not caught up to using automation, which is any tasks that is repetitive or tedious that you're still doing, that's a major red flag that you should not be doing any of those tasks. Um, that also includes even answering your own emails, most of your emails. Believe it or not, you don't have to answer all your emails. You could have, you could have your, your employees or virtual assistants um, and help you answer your clients and your leads emails. Uh, that's been a big game changer. Um, I was stuck. Uh, when these funnels was, was started converting and I started getting a lot of leads from them, I found myself kind of trapped in this email world where basically I realized that the more emails I would answer, the more money I would make. And literally, it was just, it was like tied. Like if I answered 60 emails, I would get like, just say five clients. If I answer 100 emails, I would get like eight clients. So uh, and then all of a sudden, I found myself in this world where I was just answering emails for 10 hours a day, all day, every day. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is not sustainable. I cannot continue doing this. This is not how I imagined kind of living. So I kind of had to figure out ways to kind of create the systems, the automations, the templates and sequences to be able to create those and then be able to hand it off um, to have virtual assistants or employees be basically be able to handle the lead volume and handle the emails. Um, and ever since I've done that now, I've basically got myself out of my emails. I only check my email at most once a day, sometimes once every two days, believe it or not. And I still get hundreds of emails a day that still get responded back to uh, very, you know, on time. And it's been a game, a huge game changer. So looked for automation tools. There's the stuff that I teach inside of legal funnel that kind of teaches to create templates and sequences inside of Gmail that, you know, once you create it once, then you could train your staff to say, Hey, if somebody, if a lead says this, if they ask this question, go ahead and send this sequence. If the lead, another uh, lead asks about these top, uh, this question, Go ahead and send this template. Um, through that, it's been able to save hundreds and thousands of hours on a daily basis. So, are you? So, they're sending them from your email, though, still. Yes, they are. Okay. And do you find that that helps you? That helps the client build a better relationship with you, or helps you build a better relationship with the client, or why um, is that I'm, the case? Yeah, two ways. I'm one is I'm able to serve more clients. So I will have a bigger impact to the world. And, and, you know, if my service actually does help people, which it does at this point, it's been proven, I'm sure most of us it does, then you will to serve more clients. And two, these templates and sequences that you make, it gets constantly refined based on the feedback that you get or based on different things that you see. So let's just say if I have an instructions to one of my clients who becomes a client, 
and I have to tell them, hey, go go fill out this uh, this form and sign it and scan it to me. That instructions that I have that I created as a template, I have refined so many times to make it very crystal clear what exactly what I what I want them to do. So all the language gets refined over time because I'm using these templates. And that actually leads to a more refined experience for my clients. So, you know, if you're just sitting there personalizing everything, you know, one is you'll be slower, you won't serve as many clients, and you know, you won't have that constant refinement that I'm, you know, that, that I get the advantage that I have. So Yes, it actually makes for a better, way better experience, more value for, for your clients. Is there a reason, though, that you don't have the client just emailing the virtual assistant or somebody else on your team originally and instead having it go through your email box? You absolutely can. Yes, you absolutely can. As long as you make a generic, let's say, admin at your domain name.com, that's totally fine. However, what I found is, you know, people want to work with me. So my employees are my agents. Obviously, I have, I'm responsible for their actions if they sent something wrong, then I'm responsible. I accept that. Um, but I, I've, I've realized that it helps me when people feel like they're talking to me. And that's, again, that's totally okay. Because again, it, when it comes to, in, when it comes to legal, we actually, uh, we had a whole class on about agency, we could have agents doing things on our behalf. So they're my agents, and they're pretty much acting on my behalf. Makes perfect sense. All right. So before we switch over to talking about the ads and how you get this information out, anything else we want to talk about in that creation of that funnel? Video, uh, video and uh, YouTube. Um, uh, let me just say it's videos are super, super have been very, very important, but they will continue to be very important. Um, best way to kind of get people to get fired up for to do video is to look at video like online real estate, where every video is essentially a rental property. Back in the day when we had to, you know, had dreams of like having multiple rental properties, we had to go, you know, try to save up hundred thousand dollars, buy a rental property, then rent it out and hopefully make five hundred five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a month from from one rental property. These days, it's as easy as putting up one video where that one video could make you at least five hundred five hundred dollars to up to five thousand dollars per video that you put up where your ideal clients can come find you through those videos and hire you for your service. So I see the opportunity. I've been tripling down in 2021, focusing on YouTube, and I'm not looking back. So, yeah, for most of us, I'll just put the golden nugget out there. Grab your online real estate before it's too late. Yeah, and I just, I feel like with video, you like, I get all the time, I get these clients that are like, hey, I feel like I know you. You know, I've, I've watched the show, I've seen your videos, and I just don't think you get that with, with newsletters. I mean, I think, like, that seeing somebody's face really helps you feel like you built a relationship, even if it's through a screen. Exactly. Yeah. Words are not as strong as seeing somebody on screen. And something that I that I've transitioned into is I've took all my emails and I've added some kind of video component to them. So, for example, after after somebody does a booking with me, they're the closest to the end of the funnel where they're likely to sign up. So those are very high value types of prospects that I have. So what I did is I created an email series just for those people, and I created four videos answering four top questions that they that I know that they have and these videos kind of address those things just to get them to basically sign up and it's been a big, big game changer so yes um, advanced change you know create your email series but over time look to see if you can convert those email series into a video email series and so is that the so the end of the funnel would be eventually hiring the firm or hiring the company is that the end Exactly. Yeah. Then you reach the end. It's like Super Mario. You <laughs> reach the last level, uh, pretty much. Well, but then you don't get a princess. You got to do the work now. <laughs> now you got to do the work. Yep. So um, I know you know you and I are both going to be speaking this week at the Law Firm Growth Summit. Um, I'm speaking on Tuesday and Thursday. You're speaking on Thursday. You said. Yep. What are you speaking about? Uh, it will be sales. Uh, pretty much how to take if you do get these leads, how do you actually get them to become clients, which is. I said that's 50% 50, 50, uh, 50 of it is getting those leads. Now you get those leads. Actually, the, I think the harder part is turning, turning those leads into clients. All right, perfect. So that's going to dovetail really nicely with what we talked about here because now we're putting the funnel together. We're going to get leads to it. And then people can talk with you on Thursday at the Law Firm Growth Summit to figure out how to convert those. Um, do you have a specific um, URL for the Law Firm Growth Summit or you want us to just use ours? Yeah, if you don't mind, you can use uh, yours. That's totally fine. And I'm actually in, at the uh, virtual summit. I'm sharing a tool that I've only shared one other time to my own students. 
um, that's a game changer. It basically combines the whole idea of funnels with video. And it's one tool that you'll be able to use that will basically allow you to create one of these video funnels within two minutes. And actually, I'll share my screen and actually show how I, how I do it. I'll make an entire funnel within five minutes. It's pretty cool. So make sure to show up and watch that. That's awesome. All right. So for us, it is lawfirmgrowthsummit.com slash legal ease, E-A-S-E. And Breezy, we need a chance if you can just put that in the comments, lawfirmgrowthsummit.com slash legal ease, E-A-S-E. All right, fantastic. So Thursday, you're going to share the tool. You're going to actually walk people through doing a funnel right there in that moment. So if they're not seeing exactly what we're talking about here, we have that nailed. Um, Breezy, it's just slash legal ease, not legal ease marketing on the comments. All right. Uh, so now let's transition. So we have this funnel together. We've got the videos recorded. We're going through all this. What do we do to get people into it? You know, what are we looking for to run the best ads to get the best clients? So if you're going to be focusing on paid ads, again, there's two ways, either paid ads or content. I'm more for going after paid ads first to kind of test out the offer, test out the funnel. Then if it works well and know it's a long-term play, then I transition over and also add on content and et cetera. So when it comes to paid ads, there's only one of two sources that you should focus on, either Google ads or Facebook ads. Ignore everything else. Um, with Google ads, I'm sure Jordan, your company helps out with. We do. Yep. So that works. Google ads, by all means, whatever Jordan preaches about Google ads, it absolutely works. If you're not doing Google ads, you absolutely should get on it. And then at the same time, there's a whole world of Facebook ads, which is something that's that I strongly believe in. I, I was uh, I, I, in the first four years of my law firm, and I still to this day, I still do a lot of Google ads. However, I started also exploring Facebook ads a couple of years ago. And lo and behold, I've found it feels like a um, a blue ocean of untapped world that most lawyers are not really focused on, um, and it's worked out great. Um, I could talk. I could talk. I, I guess we'll, I'll ask you, Jordan. How detailed do you want to get? Do we, do we want? Do you want to get into Facebook ads? Yeah, I mean, let's let's go. We got uh, at least another 10, 15 minutes. Okay, sounds good. So with Facebook ads, let me just drop. Some uh, some value bombs for your audience. There's only two types of campaigns you should run: either lead, a lead form ads or conversion based campaigns. For lead form ads, you're collecting just the your your prospect's contact information, your lead information. That works better if you have an offer that is kind of risk free. So let's just say if you have a, a free consultation, kind of contingency kind of cases, lead form ads. Uh, works well with that, where you just want the, 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 the their contact information. And then just make sure that you have some automations where when you do get their name, email, phone number, make sure you're texting them and emailing them. And then for most other lawyers, a conversion-based um, cam uh, campaign will work better, where you're sending people to a funnel where the funnel captures their contact information and then sends them to a video to nurture them right then and then, and then also invites them to do a booking or to give you a call right then and then. So both work up, uh, great. It just depends on what type of law firm do you have, either this risk-free offer or whether you need to nurture your um, your prospects more. Um, and as long as you set up properly um, and there's enough people in your market, that means this doesn't really work well if you just if you're just trying to target maybe your city, but I usually like state campaigns or sometimes multi-state or even better national campaigns. Then you basically, as long as you have a funnel and you tell Facebook, hey, anybody get, that gets to the second page of this funnel, then it's considered the lead. And anybody gets that gets to the third page of this funnel, it's considered a meeting booked. And you put it out there and you let Facebook do its thing, where basically Facebook will send people through the funnel and see who gets to the second and third page. And over time, you tell Facebook, hey, get me good people who turn into bookings. And just like magic, it just brings you more of those people. Um, it's been a game changer. Um, and yeah, it works out great. So in that, in that area, basically Facebook is taking the top of the funnel and they're putting that together inside their platform. They take, they send people to the beginning of the funnel, but they see who gets to those parts of the, to the, you know, to the middle parts of the funnel. And then once they see who are okay. those people that get to it, then they bring in more of those people. And so that's through basically Facebook. So basically Facebook's taking a lookalike campaign cross-referenced by a pixel that you have on a certain page once they hit that page. Doesn't not it doesn't necessarily have to be a lookalike campaign. Um 
you give it an audience. So usually depends on, you know, obviously it depends on what you're doing, but I could just tell you broad audiences works out better. Usually for this, you just give it a broad audience. You just put it out there and Facebook can kind of actually read your ads to kind of figure out what your ad is about and then serve it to those people who actually need it. So back in the day, it used to be all about targeting. You, can, you had to figure out your targeting and who that is. As long as you know which target that is, then magically it will work. These days, Facebook doesn't even need targeting. Just kind of leave it very broad. Just go target people, everybody in, in Texas, and let Facebook kind of figure who they should show it to. And then over time, once people come in, then Facebook will figure out, hey, these types of people are more likely to turn into leads. Oh, wait, wait, these people also are more likely to turn into bookings. And sometimes if you just tell Facebook that I want more leads, then you just get a lot of leads, but you don't want leads. You want people who actually do bookings. So the best conversion campaign is you tell people, hey, I want, you tell Facebook, I want bookings basically. Makes total sense. And it is incredible the data that Facebook has on people. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, and the reason why they have so much data, by the way, is, and I know there were some changes recently and stuff like that, which by the way, actually, uh, Facebook got around it, but it didn't really get released. But they they worked their way around it. Uh, the reason why they have so much data is because even if you're not using the Facebook mobile app, even if you close your Facebook mobile app, Facebook is still tracking what website pages you're going to. So they pretty much have access to everything. Um, you know, there's a whole topic whether that's fair or not. That's a whole other topic. But you want to be on you want to be on the winner side. You want to use them. You don't want to just sit there and be like, this sucks. What the hell? Did, how how could they have so many so much? You know. How could they do this? Or you could actually go use their tool and go get your dream clients. Well, it's going to be really interesting to see between Apple with the new iOS limiting privacy and Facebook trying to get all around it. I'm really curious to see if they end up just duking it out in court <laughs> over something somewhere. They will. They also realize they can't start taking each other out too. So I think it's a publicity stunt a little bit by Apple, I feel like. Um, but they don't want to play that game too because Facebook could also start playing games like them. So overall, I guess, yeah, it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens. Yeah, makes total sense. So I, I know you gave some great insight there and I love the concept of just like letting Facebook work their magic because again, the data they have on people is just insane. Are there any though, like is the mistake that people try to get in the way of Facebook? Like, is that the biggest mistake people make for the ads? And uh, the mistake that most people have when it comes to Facebook ads is trying to figure things out by themselves. So I'm sure, uh, you, uh, Jordan, you get a lot of clients who come to you after they try doing Google uh, Google ads themselves. And then you look at their account and you're like, no wonder you didn't get any results. It's it's like that for Facebook as well. If not, it's even more to, ne more to an extreme. So don't try to figure this out yourself. Don't just, if Facebook gives you an option, hey, put up an ad today, get $50 off. Don't fall for that. Either have somebody who knows what they're doing or go follow somebody who knows what they're doing so they could teach you. Uh, teach you. Which, and cause I mean, really this entire thing is like we're balancing time and money, right? Either you've got the time to create content, you got the money to the ads and you're trying to find the exact right intersection of those two things. And so it's always crazy to me when people are like, I have the time, but let me skip out on the money and then wonder like why it didn't work. Yeah, this, the, nobody talks about in this world, nobody talks about opportunity cost. So by the time you're trying to you know do this yourself, it's gonna take you two or three months what about the fact that during that two or three months, you could have went and hired, you know, legally to do this for you. So yeah, don't forget about that. So just go hire somebody who knows what they're doing um, and just get it done. Which that's why I thought it was such a strong point that you made where you'll run ads first to make sure it works and then try and back it up with good content. I think most people try the reverse where they'll spend, you know, months putting out good content, wondering why they're not getting leads. Yeah. Instead of just testing out the initial, you know, the underlying offer to begin with. Yeah, it's a mistake. It's a trap. It's a mistake. It's also wasted a lot of time. So go figure it out with uh, with paid ads. Then once it's proven, then yeah, then go back it up and just increase and do more by doing content. Um, but yeah, start off with paid ads first. All right. So as we start to wrap up, um, any other insight that you want to share with people? What else? We talked about video. We talked about the power of Facebook ads. Talk about automation. Um, also, I think let's talk about limiting beliefs when it comes to lawyers. Um, I talk to hundreds of lawyers um, uh, very frequently, and the biggest trap that I see also a lot of lawyers doing, as as we kind of mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago, is trying to do things then themselves, trying to figure things out by yourself. So always better to just have professionals who know what they're doing, 
do it for you. And, um, you know, so have that in mind. Don't waste, don't waste time. Just go have professionals that could, uh, you know, that uh, could do it for you. Yeah, I always find it interesting. I mean, like, so if you have no cases, I get it. But the lawyers that have enough work, if you're billing $250 an hour, but you're spending all this time doing $15 an hour work or $100 an hour work, you're really the opportunity cost, you're losing $150 an hour, you're losing $235 an hour, you know, you're costing yourself money in the long run, because you're cheaping out. Right. Or when, when people say I can't afford to, I'm like, you can't afford not to like, if you if you continue to drain this path, like and what led you here was exactly that. So if you continue on that path, how do you think that's going to go? So something something has to give you have to change up something. So if, if you find yourself kind of in a rut to where you kind of haven't picked up momentum, switch things around, do the complete opposite. Now go the, go around the opposite direction. Makes total sense. All right. So um, for anybody who wants to follow the show, like I said, we've got the Law Firm Growth Summit Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'll be speaking. Sam will be see- speaking. And actually, our um, Maddie Martin is going to be joining us on Thursday. She will also be speaking at the Growth Summit. In fact, she and I are on a panel and then have competing breakout rooms right before our Exhibit A attorneys with Maddie Martin of Smith.ai. Um, if you have not heard Maddie's backstory, you have to. She actually started out in culinary school and at one point was running the Uber of mechanics and just has a incredible background um, to share her wisdom with us. So, but I'm not gonna let Sam go without picking his brain one more time. Um, You know, you talked about your most important advice on the form that you submitted, websites lose you money, funnels make you money. Is that still, like, is that the biggest takeaway if people listen to nothing in the last 40 minutes that you wanna make sure they get? Or is there that one last, golden nugget of wisdom you want to make sure our listeners and watchers here yeah so i had a one of my first funnels that i created now generates about 80 to 100 thousand dollars a month and the domain just a very generic domain not a simple you know whatever domain and then about a year ago i, I went and searched for the name of the service um itin.com which is a four-letter domain and lo and behold uh, it was available. Somebody had it, and I ended up purchasing it. And now I had basically the domain of my service, a four-letter domain. Super excited. Let me put up a website, and I created a website for it. And I started driving uh, the same traffic source that I was driving for for my funnel at the same time that I was running basically both the funnel and the website. And lo and behold, a couple every time I would turn it on after I would analyze it after a month. It would lose money. Okay, try to fix up the website, clean it up, put it up again, lose money, put it up again, lose money. After like four or five months, I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, wait a minute, why am I going against the grade? And why am I going against everything that I'm talking about? Why did I make this out of a website? And I realized that's when I realized I'm not, again, it's not just you know a, a phrase, a catchy phrase to say a websites lose you money. It's no really actual um based on actual evidence that I've actually tested myself based on you know tens of thousands of dollars and know that websites lose you money for getting clients. So if you do do any kind of paid ads or even if you create content, don't send people to your homepage. That that will basically end up losing money. So that's where that that comes. Website lose you money, funnels make you money. As as crystal clear as that and as direct as that. So make sure to have 2021 should be the year that you create a funnel for yourself. And it's actually fun. You know, I look at it like as like kind of like a fun project it, um, that you create, that you con- constantly refine and work on. And it's because it's, you know, you put it up and you get that feedback. And based on that feedback, you continue refining it. It becomes like this kind of fun little experiment to see how how well can I tweak this kind of funnel to make it um, serve my clients and also for me to, you know, get more clients. So I want 2021 to be the year of funnels for you. Go create a funnel. Um, Jordan, if you don't mind, I do also want to share that I do have a Facebook group where I kind of share these uh, t- these techniques. I share a lot of value. You know, I add that value upfront before I ask for anything. The Facebook group is called Legal Funnel Members. If you just go on Facebook and you you search for Legal Funnel Members, um, feel free to join. Um, it's only for lawyers. We have about 1,100 lawyers in there right now. Pretty active, and I share a lot of stuff in there. So feel free to join there. And I think we have facebook.com slash group slash legal funnel. Is that the right URL? Yep. All right. Fantastic. So that's in the comments for anybody who didn't catch that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. Jordan, it was fun.
have a great day and then uh i will i will see you on thursday even if you don't see me while i'm watching your presentation sounds good Jordan. thank you Thank you for listening to this episode of Exhibit A Attorneys. If you're interested in becoming the Exhibit A of Successful Attorney, please check us out at LegalEaseMarketing.com, E-A-S-E.